So, hello, good evening to everyone. Assalamu alaikum once again. And so we continue with the, uh, what we left over from yesterday. And then uh, uh, the first thing which we want to learn today is about uh, um, the modeling of three dimensional structures of protein. So as you can see on the left side, there are uh, so let's let's look at on the right side first okay so uh, so overall approach uh, you see here so if you want to learn about uh, uh, different different softwares what softwares are there you can have a look on the wikipedia list of protein structure prediction softwares and then you know, on the right side okay mm -hmm. uh, let me on the pointer yeah so so the the very important thing you need is the protein sequence and the protein uh, with the help of protein sequence uh, you do multiple sequence alignment on some database on some database okay xyz database and then there is what happens is multiple sequence alignment and then the program tells how much sequence identity is that and if it is more than 30% or equal to 30%, okay, then you can go for homolog homology modeling or also called comparative modeling. And uh, if it is uh, not, uh, if it is less than that percent identity, then you have different, different options. There is one option uh, uh, of using methods called fold recognition method. And uh, otherwise, if you don't get um, uh, proper structures there, then there is option of ab initio structure prediction. So um, there are these two methods are described briefly over here. And on the left side, it's homology modeling method or comparative modeling method. So you give a amino acid sequence and what happens is the, there is a search for um, a possible protein uh, structure uh, in the different data, in, in database, particularly let's uh, say protein data bank. Uh, it looks into if there is some structure in the protein data bank because that's um, the place from where we get the 3D structure of the protein or enzyme. And then if it is there, we use it as a template to model our uh, structure of given amino acid sequence. And so it happens when the sequence identity is not that good enough, what happens? There are different, different uh, uh, protocols which comes in between the ab initio prediction, which includes energy minimization, molecular dynamics, uh, and so on. And then we come across the final structure. So commonly used uh, mod, uh, programs for the comparative modeling is Modeler, which is a free software when you register yourself uh, as a student or uh, academic uh, employee, like a professor or a postdoc or a master student and whatever, okay? You can easily get the license for Modeler. And uh, Swiss, model, uh, Swiss Model is um, an online web server which helps uh, it's very easy to use and it is quite helpful for people from the background of biochemistry or biotechnology or who, who don't have a computational background. And Modeler is bit uh, requires your attention to the computational part because it's a uh, Python, it, the Modeler uses the Python script and it's uh, not a user friendly. It's like kind of you have to use a command line terminals to, to run the program to set up the scripts and so on. And uh, for this, uh, so there are other programs as well for homology modeling, but uh, I list only the two which is commonly used. And here on the right side is up for to Roberta and ITASER, which is commonly used uh, for ab initio prediction. The complete list uh, for these three types, one type comparative modeling, homology modeling, ab initio prediction, or the third method is full recognition method that also is listed in this uh, list of protein structure prediction software at Wikipedia. So you can have a look over there. And one of the um, recent uh, approaches to make the three dimensional structure is alpha fold. So to precisely say the alpha fold 
uh, has a new version called Alpha Fold 2. Recently, it came, and it uh, and they uh, and they have collaboration with Google, and they follow the approach of machine learning. Particularly, they do the deep neural network uh, thing kind of things, and uh, you don't need uh, the. Uh, it is like quite intelligent way of making models, and the models are kind of very reliable. So I recently used AlphaFold also for my project, and I saw the results are really reliable. But um, there are some limitations. I uh, I had been recently in a GPCR conference. And in the GPCR conference, they mentioned that uh, for GPCR kind of proteins, um, they don't, uh, they, they were not that successful as compared uh, to other proteins which were successfully modeled using alpha fold. Just for you to know this last point. So what does, uh, when I say it is a 30% sequence identity or similarity, what does it mean? So, so let's say uh, this is um, this is the sequence. This is the sequence. Okay. These are two. And so this is the sequence of query, and this is the target sequence. And what you see, so the residues are different at. So out of ten, three the amino acid residues are different at three different positions. Uh, sorry, they are similar at three different positions. Was it so? Yeah. Only only three three positions they are similar. Otherwise, everywhere they are different, different, different. And that's why we say it is thirty percent uh, sequence identity or similarity. So if it was every residue was like uh, isoleucine, uh, isoleucine, and then um, uh, this uh, tyrosine phenylalanine. Uh, if it is also this phenylalanine is also tyrosine, then it's the same, the same, the same, the same, the same. All the 10 amino acid residues are the same, and then it is 100% sequence identity or similarity. And if it is 100% sequence uh, identity or similarity, then it is complete homologous. It's, it's exactly the same protein. And uh, it actually does not happen. If it is 100% similarity, then yeah, you have a structure over there already. You don't need to model it. And then second important thing where what you need to know about the templates which you consider for modeling is uh, that uh, and the resolution. And you can see what the resolution means here. Lower the resolution, better will be the um, modeled protein. Uh, so you see when the resolution was quite good, one am strong, then you see what, how much detailed was the information. But when it was four amps strong, the information is very less detailed. And for sure, if it is a very bad resolution, then it's not a good template for modeling your protein because the information which will be passed on from that structure to your uh, uh, model structure could can miss some important information. So um, what do you do? So, so this is a list of templates to model uh, to for a modeling of thrombin. And you see there are different different templates. Let's how many five templates with the different protein code and their protein name, the chains, resolution, sequence identity, and ligand position. So what do you think? Which one is the best template? You can write your chat. Uh, you can just uh, unmute yourself and just speak. Which one do you think is best template? It's 1.41 PPP beta trypsin. Okay. And then why? Because it has least resolution. Okay. That is the best resolution. And yeah. um, what else is important? Based on, based on sequence identity, <clears throat> will be like 39.1 because it's resolution and sequence identity like though it's 40.5 sequence identity but comparing the resolution and sequence identity both i think 1 hg yes exactly sure. so 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 the the 2.8 has resolution which is not that good as compared to 1.4 but the sequence identity is uh, not that bad. It's 35.4. It's uh, 
okay, it's fine to make a model. And also this 39.1, this, uh, the third one, one HCG is also fine, right? Or yes. wrong? It's also fine, but resolution is high. So I think- No, no. So something like two is okay. Something like two is okay. And it's not that bad. So uh, generally it is set uh, up to two M strong is fine. And it's just 2.2. So it's not that bad. And you also have the sequence identity, but there is another problem there. If you look into- Ligand position, no. Yes. Uh, ligand position is not known. So when the problem, so um, what do you do with the model? So wh why do you need to make the model? That is the first question. Do you want to design an innovator? Do you want to design an antagonist? Or you want to design an activation thing, activation ligand, for example, agonist, okay? So what yeah. do you want to work on? Or you want to just look into the protein dynamics without any ligand? So that is a question which helps you decide the template, what you want to model, right? So yeah. the ligand position then comes up, plays a role if you want to design an inhibitor or identify an inhibitor or agonist, okay? Yeah. And then, then there is a uh, importance of ligand position. Otherwise, um, uh, a ligand position does not play a, a, a that important role, okay? So here uh, we, we will say that because the ligand position is not known, that's why we don't choose it. Because um, uh, if we know the ligand position, then from the model, we can just cross validate our results, right? Because yes. then from the model, we will use it to dock it, to use it in the molecular docking, right? And in the yeah. molecular docking, we will use some molecules kind of, right? And uh, for that, we, we need to know where this molecule will bind. And that information will come from the literature or from the crystal structure. There are two ways, right? And uh, that's why um, it depends. And it also not depends if the ligand uh, position is known in this case to identify the template. And what else is important to know when you, when you work on, when you decide on the templates? So one chain is a better option, I guess. I'm no. No, chain doesn't matter. You can always delete the chains. Okay. You can always delete the chain. That's what I will show you later when we do the molecular docking today. But what else you can think about? So, okay, let's come to the point. So we we also need to look into the structure if, had, if it has uh, mutations if it has some substitution of amino acid residues, right? If there is some mutation there, if there is some mutation and you, yeah. we, we want to work on the wild type protein, then of course that template is not good, right? Right. Because if there is a mutation, it's not going to resemble, right? The correct uh, thing. The so, wild type. Yeah. Exactly. So so we, we, we also have to know if there is some mutation and and not only that mutation, but also we need to know if that mutation is going to be a problem for your final model or not. If it is not going to be a final problem for your final model, then it's okay. Then that if that mutation is not going to create a problem, then yeah, it's fine. You can use that template. And also you can use that template if you don't have any other options. Only you have only just like, for example, you over here, you have five templates but you have only one template in all over the PDB database. So then you ha have to, no option, but to select that only template uh, with uh, the mutation. And also that is the uh, true for um, high resolution template. Like for example, if you have only one template and that is three M strong, uh, then also you, if you don't have uh, so many templates, you have to go with that template, which is available. So one is better than nothing, right? Yes. So how we will know if uh, this mutation is uh, not affecting uh, the protein or not, like just by literature search? Yes, yeah. and like if that mutation is close to the binding site where you want to bind your ligand. Okay. okay.
So uh, from where you can append the amino acid sequence. So, uh, so the best place which I like is Uniprot. And uh, Uniprot, we can have a look how this looks like. So what we wanted to look do after that. Uh, yeah, okay. Mm, yeah, so let's... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yesterday we were talking about the oxytocin receptor, right? So oxytocin receptor, so I want to identify the, um, the templates for, uh, I want to identify sequence for oxytocin receptor, okay? I just search here oxytocin receptor. And because, so here you see so many options. And then you have to look for these uh, uh, yellow ones. These yellow ones are reviewed. You see on the left side is called reviewed. Yeah. So, Uh, because I want to work on oxytocin receptor from human being, I will choose this one, right? There is also option of rat, mouse, but I want to work on oxytocin receptor from human. So I will click here. You have to click here and uh, you come across uh, this page. So do you have the, you can open or I just copy the link over there in the chat. Yeah, let, let me copy the link, yeah, Uniport. So you can open it and then you see there are a lot of information over there. So it first it shows the function, what it does, and then molecular function, biological processes, and uh, so many things you can read about for what you were searching. And then uh, you, you can just look into some, everything over there. And then there comes, um, if you click on these things, you will, uh, the, 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 the system will bring you to uh, sequence. So for example, you click here and you will see the sequence. So this is the whole sequence of the, uh, of the oxytocin receptor, okay? So you can just copy this sequence from here. Copy. Okay, and then just, that's okay. And now we can um, search on, do our next jobs, but let's uh, go below here. So oxytocin receptor, uh, you, we got the sequence here. And then we go below. And then if when you go further below, you will come across a structure column if there is a structure already available. And you will find that there is a structure available. And uh, it looks like this. And what are the details you can read about? The PDB code is 60PK and the method was X-ray resolution 3.2 and only one chain and residues. So, we saw that um, uh, the residues from one to 389, right? There, okay, let's open in the new tab so it's more clear. So one, hundred, so one to 389, there were uh, 389 residues in this, uh, in this protein, but the crystal structure of oxytocin receptor, which was uh, solved, contains only residues from 35 to 356, okay? And you can download uh, this, you can open the, the structure from, for example, RCSPDB, just click here, right click and here, and you, you go to the website and then you, you open the structure. And that's what I showed, showed you yesterday. And uh, further information is there. And then if it is also predicted by alpha fold, which I just told some minutes ago. So for example, if you see here, so it's from one to 389. So you just click here and then you see the structure predicted by alpha fold. Uh, and the program tried to model the 
sample the whole protein and then you see uh, the information about this part of the sequence. <coughs> and uh, there are further informations about the region and so on. So you can have a look into it's like more biochemical and so on. But, and here is complete description. <laughs> So there is here is complete uh, sequence again. They show you like in the parted way, like 10, 20, 30. So it's more easy to look into the sequence. And you can also run the blast directly from here, but uh, I don't like this way. I will show you what I prefer to do. Uh, so this is uh, the whole page about this sequence. Uh, and let's, uh, let's, let's identify templates for oxytocin receptor now, okay? So, mm, so this was a sequence. I will copy the whole sequence from here. And then I will go, I will open a protein blast P, P, P. And uh, here you see, so there, so blast P is for protein blast, okay? And what you have to do is you have to copy your, um, what you copied your sequence, you have to paste it here, like this. Okay. And uh, you can also select the range which you want, but I want uh, to run the blast with complete uh, sequence of oxytocin receptor. And then I can rename it uh, to what I want to, uh, Momo course, SSGSA. I put the job title there. And then what next I want to is, I want to select the database where I want to run this I want to run this, um, I want to run the alignment for the sequence, like where I want to find the similarity, where I, I want to do the similarity, but where? So I can select that I want to do it in the protein data bank because I want to identify the templates which can, I can use for modeling, homology modeling. So this, and then there is option where you can choose the organism. For example, I want only homo sapiens, human being. So I can select uh, which, uh, which uh, organism I want. So homo sapien, so I select it. And there is, if you select uh, on this um, option, it will exclude, like there will be no, there will be kind of, uh, Everything will be shown except Homo sapiens. So, but I want only Homo sapiens. So I will not click here. And uh, I want to, I don't want, I only want the PDV structure. So I don't want the models. So I can just put click here. I don't want models. And then there are different, different options. Uh, but uh, the most commonly used is uh, protein, protein blast. So, the sequence of this protein, which is called oxytocin receptor, will be blast will, will be done uh, blast basic local alignment search tool uh, on the uh, protein data bank for protein with the structures in the protein data bank, and then you have option to show the results in new window. So I will click here because. Maybe I want to set some other parameters later. So I want a new window to open. So I will click here, blast. And then it's running, okay? Uh, you have the link for blast, right? No. So it's running over there. So, so let, let, let it run. So you know, that's what was Uniprot about how to get the sequence. And then in the NCBI, last we do this, uh, we identify the homologous templates for our homology modeling. And uh, yes, so we will come to this again later. Let's see what happened to the
process and it's still running. So longer the sequence, it will take a lot of time. Just for you to know. But it's also easily understood that it will require more computational power and more time. That's why. Similarly, you can so let it run, then we can look into another protein. Let's say cathepsin. Cathepsin S. So there are different types of cathepsin and they have different different roles. For example, cathepsin S has a role in uh, cardiovascular diseases. So let's search cathepsin S. So we will do the docking today with cathepsin S. So we will look into the structures uh, in the sequence. So you see, uh, again, I will look for all those golden, golden options. And you see cathepsin S human. It's a 331 amino acid long. And if you want to look into the details, you just click here and you see there. Again, all the information is there. And if you go down, you will find that if uh, your uh, protein has some structure result, and you see, wow, there are a lot of structures result for cathepsin S. So a lot of structures are there. So Rayan asks like, why do I choose NCBI blast over blast from Uniprot? Because, uh, I never tried it, honestly. I, I, I never do that. So it's like my golden rule. I just identify sequence here and get a, a, a very, very important information from here and then copy the sequence and then just paste it here and run the blast individually on the side of the blast. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So still it is running. And if someone else is also running on their computer, uh, I think it's the same status. So let, let it uh, run on the background and then we uh, have a look on other things and then we will come back there. So, <coughs> so, so there are two ways I talked about uh, earlier in earlier slides that there are two ways to model. Uh, uh, well, it's not going. Yeah. So, uh, modeler, I told just now. So, if you want to just note down the link, it's called like salilab.org and then backslash modeler. On this website, you can download the software, you can register and get the license. It's uh, free for you. And then you have to. So, do everything until alignment and file preparation. And this from this step to the model optimization, this thing in the light green, this thing modeler will do for you. And then again, you have to do model validation on your own. So identify the sequence, prepare input files, identify the templates. This is everything you have to do on your own in modeler and then prepare and give the files and uh, you have to run the Python script on the terminal and prepare the multiple sequence alignment also. And then you have to give this uh, alignment file also. That's also part of the input files you need to provide. And for multiple sequence alignment, uh, what I like to use is cluster W because uh, there you can save the alignment file in PIR format. PIR format is what modeler loves to take in to model the protein for you. Let me write what format it is. Um, cluster, uh, cluster W. Oh. And uh, uh, modeler likes PIR format. Alignment file. And uh, uh, you have to run the Python script, of course, on the command line, and then you have to do the model validation. And without model validation, no model is approved. So you have to, whenever you show that you prepare a model in a manuscript or wherever in your exam, like then you have to provide a validation. So for example, the first step is kind of 
Ramachandran plot where we look into the psi and pi angles of the backbone. And uh, if it is satisfies, then we say that models are okay. In modular, uh, there are uh, further things which uh, uh, help you to identify if the models are correct or not. But we will we'll come to that point later. So um, there is option. Um, so for for uh, people who with less with limited computational uh, experience or knowledge, they can easily go to the Swiss model website and then model their protein directly over there. And uh, what you need is just you need to enter the sequence. Uh, or if you don't uh, want to give the sequence, you can also just give the Uniprot ID or the name of the enzyme or protein you are interested in. And then you have the option, like it's not really, it, it, is, it will ask you if you want to select the templates, then you can say, yes, I want to select the templates. And then otherwise it can already give you model. Generally they are doing modeling every week for the protein. They are, uh, they are interested in, and most of the times the models are already available. So you don't need to run the modeling job over there. But if you want to choose the different templates, of course you can run, submit the calculation there. And then you it will give you final model. And then it also gives you validation of the model. So like everything is done in one place. So it's kind of very handy tool for, for you if you don't want to use modeler. But modeler is like a evergreen thing which you can do locally. So if you want to model so many proteins, you can just run modeler. And uh, I don't know if it is finished uh, or not. Yeah, it's still running. So let's continue <laughs> to save the time. <clears throat> so, um, if you look into this Ramachandran, this is called Ramachandran plot, and you see this guy in black and white, he's called GN Ramachandran. And uh, this plot consists of uh, three important regions, the beta region and uh, helical region left is on the right side. <laughs> and uh, right hand, uh, right-handed helical is this side. And um, what you have to look into is, uh, is there uh, some residue of your model, uh, which is in the disallowed region? And if it is there, does it makes, does it, it is a part of uh, important uh, amino residues of your enzyme or not? So uh, the disallowed region is this um, beach colored, and uh, generously allowed is yellow region, and additionally allowed is uh, uh, additionally allowed is uh, the brown region, and the most favored region is the one in the red. And what um, the people uh, from this background say is that if um, uh, is uh, if it is if the if uh, ninety percent ninety percent that means out of hundred ninety residues fall in this category in the red region then the model is good. So if it is eighty nine, then it's kind of you have to think about other things. But uh, still, the model can be okay. But if it is seventy, for sure the model is not good. So uh, if you look over here in this region, so um, let me switch on the laser pointer. If you see here, one residue called serine 128 is uh, in the disallowed region in the beach. So I will go back into the literature or into the papers and then I will find out, does this serine 128 plays important role in binding of ligands? If not, does it just participate in, in the dynamics of the enzyme somehow? If not, then I will say, okay, it's safe to go ahead with this model. But if it is part of the binding site, if it is part of um, um, how you say, uh, what is that term called? Uh, that site, 
allosteric binding uh, allosteric site which uh, affect the protein from distance if it is part of the allosteric site and it's important site then also i will not consider this model with this residue in the disallowed region so you can read about the margin and plot on wikipedia they have described very well about this sci-fi angles and so on <clears throat> so there are other ways uh, um, uh, there are other ways uh, where you can estimate the quality of the models you have built. For example, in med, uh, in modeler, there are uh, in the modeler installation folder there are already some scripts uh, which can help you to score uh, estimate the Z-dope score, and the Z-dope score uh, lower the score <coughs> better is the model, and less than zero is very good model. So if it is in negative. The value of this zeta score is in negative then okay that's a very good model but um, that is really seen in the gpcr uh, so in the gpcr i i generally see it's like close to close to zero but uh, sometimes uh, i i have if it is if it is a negative then it's a good model and then what i love uh, is this waves uh, saves web server Saves web server you can use uh, so it's a one way site uh, you can use let's let's see what uh, uh, what it shows I will copy it uh -uh. okay so this website you can just put uh, here you can upload uh, your protein here and then you can just run so there is option to just select and then run <coughs> and then you can select you can just go with the different different options which one which 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 method you want to use so generally i go with the project uh, in this but you can also choose other options but uh, this is project is of course this is the most important part of this save uh, web server and then you see i submitted the job over there the, the, i uploaded the protein and it it's the job is running it's started and when it's done it will say okay have a look there so it was a crystal structure uh, so it was not model and then yeah it shows a lot of warnings errors and so on so you see there were uh, uh, no residues in the disallowed region, white part in this case. So every program has different way to show the Ramachandran plot. And in this case, the, in the Ramachandran plot, the disallowed region is white. So you see there are zero residues in this region. And the most favorable region, that means the red region is 83.9. But it's still, I can say this is okay. It's uh, it, it, we can we can consider it because um, we can also include the residues from the additionally allowed region. So the sum will become, of course, bigger when you add this eighty four plus fifteen point three. But uh, it's a crystal structure, so we cannot uh, comment a lot on the quality of the model over there. It's a crystal structure. So this was a way how you can look into estimate the models. So, so I uploaded the crystal structure, but uh, this is generally for if you want to look into the models which you build by homology modeling program or wherever. For example, from Alpha Fold, you can also test it here. It doesn't matter which program you can just put upload the model and just have a look uh, into the quality of the model. So it's still running, okay? In 30 seconds, it will renew. What else uh, we have? Uh, so, yeah, so um, I think, uh, yeah, we can have a look to Swiss model then uh, until we get the results uh, from the uh, NCBI, in the, from the BLAST, we get the results because that's important for you to understand. So let's go to the Swiss sir, model. Sir, yeah. I had a question. Um, yeah. In the BLAST, uh, there's an option like uh, in which shows like in the top align two or more sequences. So what will we get after selecting this um, this choice? 
in the blast p page then we are running it when we are running the blast there is an option align two or more sequences so what does this refers to in this page or the, the first page uh, no uh, the pay, uh, the blast p page where we are running the blast uh, you know before we gave the command to run the blast and we selected yes. all, all the options there's an option for align two ah, or more ah, sequences okay 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 i got it yes. i saw it align two yeah. or more sequences so um, like for example if you want so this is this is uh, you wanted to input only one sequence here right and uh, that's okay. why you provided one sequence. But uh, sometimes uh, you want to look into two or three or four or five or six sequence, so many sequences. Okay. Uh, so you just click here and then there will option popping up to specify more sequence. Okay. Got so it. we it just, 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 uh, just uh, helps you to give more sequence at the same time so when it is doing the multiple sequence alignment it will consider your two inputs to align it uh, to uh, to sequences in the uh, in the protein data bank so two sequence plus xyz number of sequences in the protein data bank okay, okay? got it got it also uh, is there any way like if we have a novel protein and uh, we like you said we can search from the literature if that particular residue uh, is it if it is present in the um, prohibited region we can search from the literature what is its role but if there's no literature available we have a novel protein so how people determine the active sites of the uh, proteins if there is no structure available then they will look into the closely related homologs okay Okay, okay. And in the closely related homologs, uh, for example, <clears throat> uh, the oxytocin receptor, okay, oxytocin receptor, uh, the structure of oxytocin is closely related to vasopressin receptor. And uh, the oxytocin receptor um, uh, has uh, only one structure till date, and that uh, only with the antagonist. But in my project, uh, in my project, in my current project, I want to look into how does uh, oxytocin bind and oxytocin is agonist. So we don't really trust uh, that interaction. Uh, and also I need to model, but uh, how I will look into, I will look into the structure of vasopressin and I will see what, uh, because luckily with the vasopressin, it's a different protein, right? It's a different protein, but it's uh, from the same family. It's like from it's from the GPCR. Yes, from GPCR. And, uh, and, 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 and then in the uh, vasopressin, uh, luckily the structure which was resolved is with the agonist. So I will look what interactions the agonist in vasopressin is making, the vasopressin is making with the vasopressin receptor, okay? Okay. So I will uh, look into those interaction, those amino acid residues, and I will focus on those amino acid residues in oxytocin receptor as well. Okay. If the oxytocin is making such interaction, because it is the, the molecule, the oxytocin and oxyto uh, vasopressin, these two peptides are only different at uh, two amino acids. So it's nine amino acid long peptide, and it is, uh, it is just uh, different with the two positions, like third and like uh, one more position. So only two, two locations are different. Otherwise it's the same peptide. So you see, it's like quite close yeah. to, so you have to look for something which is really close. And if by chance uh, it is so novel that you don't have something like that, then, then you are kind of, uh, you have to go through hard time then. <laughs> but for okay. sure you need some um, yes. uh, also, scientific uh, justified way yeah. because then to convince the reverse is not easy yes so um if we don't have anything then we will go through wet lab procedures or we can do something we can do in the computation we, we can, can do, do with the computation yeah we can okay do. okay that is what i wanted also uh uh if like if there's only like difference with uh, of like two amino acids in the peptide so how is it different from isomers or like 
they can be isomers too <laughs> if we are think and uh, we can think like yeah. that yes yes but they are like right now we are like recognizing them as two different proteins so mm -hmm. so how we will make that judgment yeah the the way they bind uh, and that is going to be different for sure the number of the, the molecular interactions are going to be different in in both the cases so how close it is uh, anyway that is uh, something which is going to make it, it different and that's why you have to look into the interactions which it is making and the one of your interest what interaction that is making that will that will be for sure different that's why it is different and that's why it is selective right okay yes yes got it so Thank so you. oxytocin can bind to vasopressin as well oh, yes. but uh, oxytocin can bind to vasopressin as well oh, sorry not to vasopressin vasopressin receptor as well so yes, yeah. yes. it can bind to vasopressin receptor at, as well so uh, it can bind, but uh, the action which is required will be only triggered when it is binding to the correct receptor, right? Okay. And that that is the only uh, play of the molecular interactions. Ah, okay. so we have the list here now. The templates are ready to see. So um, you see in the blast, there are a lot of uh, hits there. So 74 sequences are there. But we are more only consider we are only focused on the top few, and uh, you you see there are only Homo sapiens, only Homo sapiens because I choose only Homo sapiens. I don't wanted other anim, any, any any organisms to be my results. So all of them Homo sapiens, and uh, so the first uh, of first hit and the top hit was. Uh, or in uh, directly the oxytocin receptor okay you see the screen right so, <clears throat> so there is a question for you why it is 90 percent even it is oxytocin receptor and it is a human and i choose the sequence which i blasted here was um, about oxytocin receptor why it is for 90 percent only and why it is 87% only? Why it is not 100%? Why it is not 100%? You can give a blind guess. I'm sure you, you can just give a guess. I just want to you to speak so that we don't see sleep. Mutation. Yes. And that makes what different? Percent identity or cure coverage? What is different because of mutation? Percent identity. Percent. Exactly. So because I told you yesterday, if you remember, there are several thermostabilizing mutations which uh, help uh, to make the crystal structures. And that's why the experimentalists did some mutations in the uh, structures of oxytocin receptor before it could form the crystals. And there were a lot of them. So that's why the, the sequence similarity, sequence identity or percentage identity is 90.083%. It's not 100%, okay? And then what, why the query coverage is 87%? <clears throat> why this is 80, 87%? Because those mutated residues are left. No, 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 no. No, mutating residues have a role to play for sure in the percentage identity or sequence similarity or sequence identity. We this is like the same name for one thing: percent identity, sequence similarity, sequence. Identity. This is the same name for percentage identity. Yeah, this thing. But the query coverage is eighty-seven percent. Uh, if you remember, I told you that in the crystal structure. <coughs> the molecules. Maybe. <laughs> uh, let's look into the um, oxytocin receptor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's go down, 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 down. Yeah. So 
35 to 356. You see now why it is not uh, not uh, complete. So the, the one to 34 is missing. 30, 357 to 389 is missing. So N terminal and C terminal is not there. The complete sequence was okay. 389 amino acid long. So because the N terminal 1 to 34 was missing, 357 to 389 was missing. And that's why, because these residues were missing <coughs> in the KISS structure, that's why it is 87. Query coverage is like, um, it, it, it looks into the length of the sequence. It doesn't look into the identity, but it looks into the length first. So it, the length is uh, similar or not. And then you see the first top hit is uh, vasopressin receptor. Second hit also, third hit also. So top hits are vasopressin receptor because they are closely related. And you see the identity is close to this. Yeah, 45, 43, 45. So if I, if I want to choose a template, which one I will choose? <coughs> if I want to choose a template, which one, which one I will choose? Second one. Second one, but wait, because these are all vasopressin receptor, I will open this in a new tab. No. Yeah, in the new tab, and then look into the resolution, 2.8. 4.2, so for sure I don't want 7BB6. So I don't want this second one, third one. 7BB6, I will exclude, I don't want because it is 4.2 Armstrong. And then this one, 2.6 Armstrong. So 2.6 or 2.8? Of course we want 2.6, right? Because it is yes. better. So that's why we will choose which one? 7DW9. Uh, 7DW9. So among these two, I will choose this one. There is uh, not much difference between the sequence identity of the second and the third, right? And the resolution is better for 7DW9. So you know now how you can choose a template, right? So you so now you know the PDB code uh, seven DW nine. So you can just copy here and then you can uh, open RCS B and then you can just uh, write the code here and open the structure <clears throat> and you can download the file for further computation or analysis or whatever. So let's go into the Swiss uh, modeler. So I want to make model of the oxytocin receptor. Okay. So I will write oxytocin receptor. <clears throat> and then you see all the list over there. And uh, just uh, just in case uh, you want to uh, you want you want to be specific right in the beginning, I can just uh, give the code of the Uniprot. This is called the Uniprot ID. I just copy it from here and then paste it here, and then just press enter. And then you see it just directly takes you to that particular protein. You don't have to option choose, choose. We can just open directly and then it gives you, and then it says we already have a structure. Resolve Swiss models. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, 
so it, they already have the models over there. So you can directly download the models from here. Or you can uh, rebuild the models. So I can just uh, click on the interactive modeling. And uh, so what is here? So sequence is already given here. Or if you want to give your sequence, you can just give your sequence like this. Uh, you can just give, choose from here. Uh, and uh, like reset, I will just reset it. And then you see the option to give the sequence. And then it choose, takes the sequence from you. And then you can decide on the project title. Blah, blah. And you can give your email address, which is optional. And then first step, I will search for the templates and then it will look for the templates. But we didn't need needed the templates right now because we already looked into the templates here. But if you want to model with the Swiss modeler, you have to find a template from the Swiss modeler because the way in, there, uh, in the Swiss modeler, uh, so uh, in the Swiss model there, and they have uh, two different type of uh, identifying the homo homologous templates. So I will show you. So uh, this is the way which HH splits there. So like to identify the, the similarity is uh, one of the method HH splits. And uh, this is one way you can identify the templates and the other way is blast. Okay, so we did the blast and you will see uh, you will find that some of the templates which Blast finds out is not listed in HSBlitz. And with HSBlitz listed out, uh, you will not find in Blast. But uh, that happens rarely, but it can happen. And the percent of sequence identity and, uh, and the query coverage can also vary slightly. Okay, because, the, because they have different different methods to do it. Like uh, uh, this is how the algorithm is designed for these two different programs for Blast and HS Blitz. So right now it's running. Uh, yeah, so now you see there are different templates. Okay. And uh, 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 so it, it shows you all the templates right now. Yeah. So you, ha you have the option now to choose, build the model by choosing the template. So I if I want to use, um, I want to build a structure of uh, oxytocin receptor in the inactive state. That means with the antagonist, for sure I will go to six, uh, choose the crystal structure, okay? But if I want, because uh, the oxytocin receptor structure has uh, the inhibitor with that, maybe I can open the RCS and then I can show you what I mean. 60pk. So here you see, so it is bound with the uh, structure. And so this is uh, bound with the inhibitor. It is uh, the inhibitor of the oxytocin. So, but I want to, because I want the model for agonist uh, binding. So I can choose, I, I should choose uh, something which is bound with the agonist. And, uh, and, this, uh, and this is on the top, you see 70W9, which we found out in the blast as well. So I will just click on this and then uh, you just say, build the model and the model will be built. So it's running and it will not think, and you can also build models for every template but uh, it's not worth uh, doing that. It will just take your time. So it will be very shortly, the model will be ready and when we can have a look uh, on what uh, kind of, uh, what kind of uh, uh, validations it provides on the website. So this we already looked into. Yeah, okay, the model is there, right? No. Yeah, the model should be there. Yeah, wait. Uh, no? Yeah, so the model is ready. 
and you see there are different different parameters local estim quality estimate and q means z is square and uh, the what uh, uh, i like the most is this one it it compare with the set of pdb structures so <clears throat> that is core of all the structures available in the database and where the z score uh, normalized q mean score is of our model so it's slightly above out, out of the line so if it is one the black region it was really good model but it is slightly away from there so it's okay but it's not that good if it was this red star was somewhere in between this black region because the z score was less than one of those models then i will say that yeah my model is good and you can just save uh, your this figure as png if you want yeah so this way you get the quality figure for your publication just like getting it doing it here so um, yeah so this was swiss model you can you oh, you are free um, to explore and there are so many options to explore actually you have to do it and they have the documentation also and tutorial examples just you have to explore yes uh, you there was some question please yes sir there's this tag order by um in the swiss model uh so what does this represents order by gmqe or by oligostate or by ligands or by sequence identity similarity or coverage wait 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 let me go to their place no uh, in this... the... no no uh, the next the other page models yes this order by ah uh, because um, when you have so many models in this case you have only one model right yes so that's why you see that nothing happens when if you if you if you use like this template there are 50 templates and you just put tick here 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 for example and just click on build model yeah and then it will make seven models there okay it will make seven okay. models and then in this list you will find seven models and then to order those seven models based on the qmqe which is actually the score which can read about it here global model quality estimate and so on like there are different different options to uh, validate it so you can just sort it accordingly or you can sort uh, the which models based on the sequence identity and so on yeah this is what it means by order by because you have only one model over here that's why you don't see the difference okay okay got it got it thank you so i think we can take a short break of a uh, couple of minutes or five minutes if you and i think that will be better if you want to drink water or something you can just go and then come back we will so it's um, I don't know, let's say at uh, whatever time in India, I don't know it is. After 20, after three minutes, let's say we'll be back. Okay. After three minutes, we'll be back or let's say five minutes, we'll be back. Okay, sir. Set. Okay. What in progress? So let it open completely. Still, the programs are being loaded. Yeah. So remind me later, and then we so so then we have this program opened, and. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you, do you would like to do the docking with me or you want to see the docking together? See the docking. Or do the docking. See the docking? Actually, I call? don't have the downloaded program. So ask other, whatever <clears throat> others want. But other, it depends on others. Do the docking together. Okay, that's that sounds good.
So the first step is we need the, um, the um, protein and the molecule, okay? And uh, let's obtain the structure first. Uh, but uh, one more thing, yeah, we, because you, oh, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so please, uh, those people who want to do the talking together with me, you need this uh, thing, uh, download this file and install it. If you are Windows user, if you are not Windows user, then you have to download your respective software from here, okay? <coughs> yeah. So let's get back to, so you can, it, it will be quite quick. It's a small file. You just need to click install and it will be done. Please, please write in the chat as soon as you are done with the installation. I just uh, put in uh, a link there of this uh, website uh, of the PDP. Please open that. And uh, we will, because we want to work on catapsin, um, which catapsin we are working on? Yeah, catapsin S. And the role was of catapsin S was in the cardiovascular diseases. So uh, because I know the code directly, so I don't want to uh, spend time on searching different, different structures. I want to just go with you know, the PDB code and that is 3OVX. That is quite uh, good resolution 1.49 and it is bound with the covalent inhibitor. So we will do the docking of inhibitor, covalent inhibitor with uh, the catapsin S, okay? So you have to go on the right side and uh, <clears throat> you have to click on download files and then PDB format, okay? 3OVX, 3OVX and then download and then PDB format. <clears throat> you have to click on the file and then you see it will be downloaded. And once, you, so you have to create a folder uh, somewhere. Let's say I have a folder called, uh, I, I, I make a new folder. Lolo. Okay. Okay. And uh, where is this file which I downloaded? It's three OVX that I can write and click show in the folder. And then I find the file here, three OVX. <clears throat> and then I just paste this file in this folder called Lolo. Okay. So first step is uh, uh, prepare the structure. Uh, so it is, uh, so if you double click here, you will see uh, that it is, uh, <coughs> it, it has two chains and uh, of course the molecule there, 3OVX, 
uh, sorry, I mean to say this uh, inhibitor, yeah, in this structure of 3OVX, the, the inhibitor, this uh, inhibitor of uh, cathepsinase is there. And then there are two chains. And how you will find there are two chains? Of course, you are looking at it with the eyes. You can see that there are two chains. This red thing is the water molecule. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> Uh, so I will show you a quick way to delete things. Uh, so, so first you so, uh, click on S and you see the sequence. So you see the chain A, you slide this and you see chain A and then you see chain B, okay? So I want to keep the chain A and delete the chain B, okay? <coughs> so I will click on the residue here. I will click on the residue here, and then you have option to choose the chain. So you can click here, or this is the safest way. Click on this and then chain B is selected. The whole chain is selected. You see, this OOO is water molecule. And you can just go to action and then remove atoms. So the chain B is deleted, only chain A is left, okay? Now what I want is, uh, I want to remove the water molecules from here. I just go to action and in the list, I see remove waters and then I remove water and it's done. And I also don't want uh, the molecule, the ligands I don't want, okay? So uh, this ligand, so yeah, so you will, when, because you have selected, uh, the, you have to change here uh, to residues or molecules. Yeah, and then you can choose the molecules. So I don't want this, this is this was, this is kind of a molecule which is uh, required for crystallization purpose. And that is of no use for us. So I will just remove it from here, remove. And then <clears throat> I all, so now I want to save this molecule, this receptor molecule and the, uh, the protein molecule separately. So, so you have, uh, you have uh, two different, two different things. One is the protein and one is the, the molecule the the inhibitor and then you can just go to residues and then click on this and uh, you can so you 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 clicked on this and you see the selection is highlighted what you have to do is select on this and then go to action and i will do extract object and you see the object is extracted what was the name of object? We can just rename the object name. It doesn't matter what was the name. We can just say ligand. And we can rename COVX to receptor or protein. We can just write protein. Is it clear or you miss something? I can just repeat it. Although we don't have much time, but I, I, I think you can stay for 15 minutes more later. So just ask me if you don't follow. Yeah, just in write it. In this case, you, you downloaded a, a structure in which ligand was already there present. Exactly. But uh, we don't want to do with this particular <laughs> ligand and we have another ligand of our choice that we want to dock. Yeah, so then you, case, you just, in that case, you will delete this ligand. You will just keep the protein over there. How you how we will incorporate the ligand of interest? You don't have to incorporate the ligand of interest. You just need uh, the protein. Okay. You just need a protein over there. You delete every ligand. Okay. <coughs> but remember one thing. Sometimes in the in the in the complex uh, sometimes there are some ions which are important for example calcium ions or iron or some ions are important for uh, uh, the interactions yeah 
and then you have to you should not delete that you have to leave that in the system in the in, so you have to leave that you don't you should not delete the whole thing then yeah so you see i have now separated the ligand from here and that is for purpose we will not use it so this these two things will become two different files you have to go to file and then export molecule so uh, how do i remove water molecules i can hide them but I no you don't have to hide but you have to delete you have to go to action yes and <clears throat> you have to go to action and then remove waters because the uh, waters will uh, water water will create issue in yeah, because it is unnecessary yeah Got only it. water when it is bridging the interaction then that kind of water molecules is important and then there is a way to keep that water molecule that particular molecule water molecule you can leave and you have to remove the rest of the water molecule <clears throat> so now we will save the, the uh, protein and ligand separately so you have to go to export molecule in file file and then export molecule and then you have to go to multiple mm -hmm. can we save yeah i think we can save one one file per object And then let's see what it saves. So it asks you two times because there were two objects. So if I open here, I see protein separately <coughs> and ligand separately yeah mm. it feels like everyone is sleeping <laughs> you have yeah, to yeah, yeah. yeah okay that's good people are alive so so we have um, we have now protein and ligand now here yeah. So you know that the crystal structure uh, does not have uh, we we, uh, uh, we in the crystal structure there was no hydrogen bond. So you can add hydrogen bond here. You can just go to action and add hydrogen, and then save molecule again, and then. Select ligand and then you have to go to drop down and you have to select PDB and then save and then yes. So now when you open, you will find that there is hydrogen bond there. <coughs> yes. And uh, the protein, we can add hydrogen later in the program itself. I, we could also add it here, but the program complains that, oh, that hydrogen bond, uh, that hydrogen atom I don't identify. So to prevent that, I just want to do it here only. So you have to go to file and then <clears throat> you have to set the preferences. Set, okay startup directory so hmm, one more thing you have to do so this is the directory you have to go here and then you copy the path you have to copy the path like this copy and then you have to steal that path and then paste it in this startup directory and then just paste it and right click is not functioning so you have to write uh, you have to do control v Okay, 
and then you have to click on set don't click on make default don't click on there but click on set because uh, if you click on make default then the problem is when if you by chance if you rename the folder if you move the folder if you delete the folder then this uh, this software will not open it will create problems so you need you want to specify the directory only for current work so just set it now don't make it default just set it i will click set and it is set now set set done and then close <coughs> Now I want to load the ligand, and uh, uh, what I can do is uh, best way or the shortest way is like to go to quick setup, and then I want to load the file from the file, and then you will see that there is nothing here because the type of file is small two by default, but the file which we have is PDB format file. So you have to choose PDB file and then you will see. Okay, why we don't have. Uh -huh. Why we don't have that. Um, wait, the ligand file does not recognize because. Ah, because. It was saved in the CIF format. Okay. Uh huh. So <clears throat> maybe you saved in the PDB format. Uh, if it is not, then uh, you can go, you open the file here and you can for sure choose file, export molecule, and uh, save. And then you can choose PDB. And then again, and uh, yeah. So now it is the file is in the uh, in the PDB format, and this is what the program is asking for in the okay. Now it will make it problem for me. Quick setup from file, and then so it accepts only three formats: small two, PDBQ, PDB file. So PDB file, and the ligand is there. And then I will select accept, and the file is created. If you go into the directory, you will see that this file is created: ligand dot out. Okay. So I will load the ligand now by going to ligand, input, open, and the ligand out, and the file is loaded in the screen in here. So this is the ligand file. And uh, now I, so you, you can skip this flexible residues because Flexible residues is uh, if you want to keep the receptor or the protein flexible, but I, want to keep the ligand flexible but not the protein flexible so if you want to keep the protein flexible part of the protein flexible then you have to specify the residues and so on but now i want to load the protein so i will go to grid macromolecule open and then same way i will go to all files and then protein open and it will complain something which you don't have to worry about it says that you need to save it in the pbdqbq format but that's okay i will just write pdbqt save it but the, you have to do some more work in this uh, first work is you have to go to edit because there was no hydrogen. If you remember, I did not add hydrogen over there and there were no charges added. So first I will add hydrogen. And then all hydrogens and then of course, okay. Hydrogen is added. 
and then I will add the Coleman charges. So generally, Coleman charges is added to the protein and Castillier charges are added to the ligand. So in this case, because we are adding charges to protein, I will say add Coleman charges. So Coleman charges are added, okay? And uh, now uh, I want to save again my structure. So I will uh, go again, choose protein. Again, and then I will choose protein here and save. Yes. No. Yeah, it always makes this issue. Maybe some of you don't did not have the issues, but um, sometimes you face issues with saving of the file. Okay, so uh, did it work for uh, some people or it does not work for anyone? So you have to save the file before you can run. So I will add the protein again. Okay, that's good. Thanks for. So, but I will. I will need to add. I will need to add the protein again. Auto talk. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I will add the um, hydrogen again. Add add and then add coleman charges and then uh, i will save uh, uh, the protein again and uh, i will save as pdbqt and should save now yeah it worked so the receptor is saved now with the hydrogen bonds and the ligand also. And uh, can you tell me why we already have the ligand over here in this? Like it is already docked. Why? Can it some? Can someone tell me? We first put ligand here and then I I don't hear. It's so soft. It's very, I, we don't hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, now. So, because we opened ligand first and then we opened protein in the same uh, window, in the same autodoc tool. <clears throat> no. <laughs> it, is, we, we, it is already looked like in a doc confirmation because uh, the receptor and the protein, uh, the ligand and the receptor were separated from the same structure and we did not uh, we did not uh, we did not um, uh, uh, separately downloaded both of them exactly we did not separately download it we did not uh, change the xyz coordinate of these two files yeah and that's why that's why we that's why we want to uh, now, that's why we see that it is already in the uh, in the pocket kind of but we will do the docking let's uh, one more function i want to show you about this program is how you can uh, see the ligand for example ligand looks like this here you click here or you can show as a sphere also by clicking here and in the protein you can do it uh, like this and you see it's like cartoon weave or you can also put uh, the surface view. So you see, it's uh, like in the binding pocket already, but uh, that's uh, not the purpose of us. We want to do the docking and we will do the docking. Next step is um, what we want to do is we have to uh, define the grid box, okay? To do the grid calculation, right? That's what I was showing you in the slide. 
So for that, uh, we need to tell the program what type of ligand is that, and then we can open the ligand and whatever we can do, but because the ligand is open already, we choose the ligand. Choose the ligand, and then here we choose the ligand. Okay, not found, why? Mm -hmm. We can just uh, add the ligand again. It is a problem sometimes with this software. It should work. Uh, uh, set the uh, choose the ligand, ligand out. Yeah, it works. And then you have to go very step by step. So, first you have to open the molecules and then add the charges and so on. Then you have to choose the ligand because that only decides uh, the type of grid has to be generated. Choose ligand. And I choose the ligand and then go to the grid box. Okay, so this is the grid box. And uh, you have to place it uh, intelligently because this is uh, the grid box is the place where the docking will happen. So if I leave it here, it will do the docking only in this section, only in this section. But uh, <clears throat> uh, sometimes we don't know or we don't know where the ligand will bind. We have no idea. It is completely novel protein. It is 100% novel protein. We don't have a binding site idea. Then what we do is we just uh, make this box bigger. And how we can make this box bigger? We will just drag it like this. We'll just drag it like this. And you see, it's bigger. It's bigger. It's, it becomes bigger this way. So, so like to do it faster, I just select 120, 120 on each side. You just right click and then just press OK. And here, right click and then press 120. And then, yeah, you see everything is covered. And now when I do, when I set the grid, uh, it will just uh, do everything. It will just, uh, do the docking everywhere. So the grid, when we calculate the grid, it will take a lot of time. Uh, it's already mm, mm, 10 there. So I will be a bit fast now. So um, uh, what I have, what we set here is before, what was before, so it was 40. So let's set it 40 because 40 will take less time because that is the side of the grid, which we want to set. 40, 40, 40, in X, Y, Z direction, 40, 40, 40. But still, uh, so uh, from the literature, we know that the ligand will buy, the inhibitor will bind to the catalytic residues, okay? So, <clears throat> so one more option is here. We can set, uh, set box, show box as line, so it's more clear to look inside the things. And uh, from the literature, we know that uh, uh, some of the catalytic residues are important in binding. So I go to the protein and make it bigger. And you see there is amino acid residues, whole amino acid based residues you see here. So from the literature, I know that this residue is important, GLN-19, so I highlight it. Can we see here? No, it's not clear. So I will make it uh, bigger. Yeah, so now we can see it here where it is. And the next residue, which is important, is 1625. Uh, it makes a covalent bond. This inhibitor makes covalent bond with this uh, residue of the enzyme. So we select this residue as well. And uh, as well, it makes interaction with the uh, histidine. Uh, 164. So these are kind of histidine 164 and cysteine. This is kind of a classic um, uh, part of like uh, the, the catalytic triad cysteine, histidine. Uh, this is the part of the catalytic triad. So I choose this. And so we know from here uh, the whole catalytic side is here. So when I but, set the grid. But what if we want to do blind docking? Because if we don't know the residues. Exactly, that's what I said. When we want to do blind docking, then we will cover the whole protein with that box, the grid box. 
that's what I was showing here. Okay, and now oh, because we know the banding site is here, so I will move the box to fit it, to fit here. And we can move it by dragging this scale like this, like this, okay. And like that, making it upper, making it left, making it more again. So you see, so we are covering that uh, those residues now, slowly, slowly. And if it is not covering, we can just make it 50. That is better, make it 50. Make it 50, 50, 50. And <clears throat> then when, so it's covered now, you see, it's covered. But uh, next step is uh, file, close saving current. File, close saving current, and it's saved. So the file is saved. So it, you don't see, but it's saved. So, and then you have to write output, save GPF. And mm, I will name it grid, grid dot GPF. You see the uh, extension GPF, So grid dot GPF. It is important that you specify this extension. For example, in the previous files, we specify dot pdbqt so uh, here also you have to specify dot gpf in the end because sometimes the mgl tool is uh, stupid and it does not save the file with the extension and that's why it is important that we specify the extension of the file with the file name so grid dot gpf and we save it okay <clears throat> and then we run the auto grid and you see, uh, so you see the working directory, which you decided from before, and the program file path name auto grid for it wants to see and they, which where you can find this program. You have to go to browse. And then you have to go to your computer, your PC. And then you have to go to your uh, so folders where you have the installation. And then program files. So if you did, if it is your computer is 64 bit operating system, I mean new, you have a new laptop or a new computer. Generally, you have these two kind of folders: program files, program files x86. There you will go, and then you will find several several folders, and there you will find a folder called script. The script research institute. This is from where the Autodoc comes from. You have to open this folder and then you will find this folder called autodoc and this you only will find when you have installed uh, the autodoc and then you have to choose auto grid 4 you have to choose auto grid 4 you have to choose auto grid 4 and then open and then you see it's there and then uh, you have to provide the parameter file name and that uh, you have to come again to the uh, folder you see which where you have um, the file which you have created grid.gpf you uh, select this file open and the uh, third line log file is already created now it, it, the path is already created you have to just press launch and if when you click run and this is running then everything is fine if it is stops immediately then something went wrong so now it finished the grid because we just set to 50 m uh, 50 50 50 it was not complete protein uh, so it does why it doesn't take a lot of time if we covered the whole protein the grid calculation would have taken a lot of time now we will do the docking so first we prepare the docking setup choose the macro molecule set the rigid file name and the rigid file name rigid what was rigid the protein was rigid so protein and then ligand we choose ligand out and then you see what type of ligand atoms were there and you say accept without doing anything without um, uh, uh, changing any options and then you have to choose what type of algorithm you want to use for searching the binding pose genetic algorithm and uh, generally uh, i do number of gerunds 200 
but because we don't have that much time, I will do, let's say, 10, okay? The default, so that we get something for now. And then we, we go to docking parameters and then say accept. And then uh, other options we don't want to play with. And then we want to say what type of output file we want. And then the first option we choose Lamarckian genetic algorithm because the search parameter was genetic algorithm. So we choose output as Lamarckian genetic algorithm. Lamarckian is like widely accepted. It's the best, like some, you can also choose Vina and so on, but Lamarckian is what we are going to set as output now. And then doc dot docking parameter file, DPF. Docking parameter file, doc dot docking parameter file, DPF. And then we say save. <clears throat> and then uh, what is next is uh, you have to, so now you save the output, you save the, uh, the required files and then you have to go to run and then you have to select run autodoc. And then again, so working directory is already selected, but the program is path is missing. So you have to give the program path, the complete path. So for this, you browse here and then again, go to your PC and then where the installation was there, the scripts, where is the scripts? Yeah, and then autodoc and then autodoc four and then open. And then you see it's there, it's loaded. The path is loaded. And then we have to specify the parameter file, which we were just created doc.dpf. And then we choose it doc.pdf. And then the whole path is required. This DLG means docking log file. So let's launch the docking. So if it, everything is working fine, the window remains there. If there was some issue, some problem, this window immediately goes away. So if it is there, we are happy to see it. So let's, let's wait for a minute or two when it will finish. So um, when it will finish, we will look, look into the results and then we are done for today. So by the way, in the, in the meanwhile, we can have a look into other things. So, <clears throat> uh, so there are, mm, uh, so there are other options like this. Sometimes what happens is that you have a peptide, peptide to dock with the protein and uh, Autodoc, Autodoc has some problem with uh, doing because uh, it has, uh, it, it, you can only dock small molecules in the Autodoc. I mean to say small molecules is that uh, there is some certain limitations of autodoc. If you, their num number of bonds are increasing in the ligand, then autodoc fails to do its job. And then comes, uh, uh, then comes uh, uh, the role of other softwares like web servers, for example, where you can do protein, protein docking. I mean, protein, protein docking is like protein A and protein B. Mm, you want to do the docking with them and then you take these two protein and then prepare the system and do the docking uh, score and then there is a complex structure formed. So you can do this online with this software uh, uh, in this web server, Hadoc, Zdoc, Flex, Pepdoc and uh, you get the results done. And you, you, it's quite easy to do that. You can just look on your own over there and uh, if you are rich, I mean to say, if you are working in a group which already has a software called like Discovery Studio or some software like that um, allows you to do the protein protein docking on your computer, you don't need web server there. But for, for general purpose, for people who don't have uh, uh, money, they can always use this kind of uh, online servers and the results are quite reliable and uh, you can publish your paper with these web servers as well. Mm, so mm, in the meanwhile, we get uh, the results, um, which is not right ready, is it still running? Uh, you have any question?
you can just ask start asking so we save time so uh, i have a question so suppose uh, i want to get connected to super computers and uh, i have that in my institute and my boss wants me to do some kind of uh, ligand search like from a uh, from a drug database i have to narrow down to certain drugs that actually we want to work on so it's kind of like um, uh, like we have to narrow down so for that definitely we have to dock multiple drugs like maybe like 10000 drugs at a time or 20000 drugs at a time so there might be some kind of things that we need to connect to uh, like how exactly we have to proceed to that so i have two questions first question what is your affiliation iit What is your affiliation? You are in IIT or what? I am right now in uh, Case Western. I am in uh, like uh, United States and I am doing post. Okay. Here. Okay. 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 So the, uh, uh, I thought you are in India because in India, supercomputer is not everywhere. So, so the first of all, if you have uh, access to software, for example, Scrollinger, you know, you have heard this name. I'm very new to uh, this, so I have to learn things on my own because I have some kind of work related to bioinformatics. So I have to so, eventually learn. Yeah. So there are uh, so so there is uh, this. Um, this uh, it's quite expensive, but maybe your department, your your lab already has that software. So. The software has uh, something called like light to do the docking. Okay. And in the glide, there are different, different options. Glide, uh, high throughput virtual screening, which is meant for screening large number of ligands for your protein. What we have to do actually a high hmm? throughput virtual. That's what we have to do. High throughput exactly. virtual screening. So glide are different type. So the glide glide can be and their glide are of different types. So one is HTVS and then when is standard precision and uh, one is extra precision. So the first step when you have so many number of molecules, for example, just now you said you have 10,000, for example, molecules, then you have to start with HTVS mode of glide. And uh, you can get the molecules uh, from, uh, uh, for example, Drug Zinc banks? database. Zinc database. Okay. Drunk bank. Yeah, exactly. So you can get these molecules from there, like the package, and then you can make a database. You have to create a database locally, and then you can start with high throughput screening. When you have obtained some reliable results with that, you have to go with the, you have you can uh, test it with the standard precision or extra precision SP mode or XP mode. But uh, there are other ways as well, which are more clever and more intelligent way, and that is like uh, you have to do pharmaco for. Let me write it in the chat. Pharmaco for based virtual screening. In that case, you should know uh, uh, what kind of molecular interactions it will make and build a pharmacophore model. And that model will screen that particular type of molecules from that database. So for example, in my, when I was uh, in working in CDRI like no, so I had uh, 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 a list of molecules, which were like, uh, how many, like, uh, uh, 100,000 molecules were there. And when I put a pharmacore approach, I just got 70 molecules only. So this pharmacophore method is quite reliable in choosing molecules. But uh, what people do, the first step is from those database, first step is you should check if those, which molecules of those have drug-like properties. Okay, no, if that molecule does not have drug like property, it does not make you know, sense to work on that molecule if you are working in medical field, right? So results are there. So I hope I uh, was able to answer you, Sidra. 
So I deleted all everything to make it everything clean here. Uh, you can also just go to edit and delete and delete all molecules. And that's it. So we will analyze the results now. Analyze docking open doc dot dlg. So you see uh, a molecule is open, a molecule, and you said you wanted 10 molecules, right? So we will we have 10 molecules, but we are not seeing them right now. So first we need to open the macromolecule and that was protein open. And uh, um, what else we have now? So we can make things more clear to look into. So protein, let's make it like this. Yeah, now it looks more beautiful, let's say. And then we set the ligand like this. So it looks more, more interesting now. Or this, no, this no, it's ugly. So it's better. And we can change the color based on atom type. Yeah, no, it didn't change, pretty. Okay, so this is the ligand, okay? And now you have to go to clustering. First step, go to clustering. Show the clusters. And then you see, so this is the cluster which was formed. So, so, there, so there were one, two, three, four, five, six. So there were six sites. Uh, where uh, the docking program identified that your ligand can fit, okay? There were six sites. Uh, so we did 10 dockings, right? We did number of uh, genetic algorithm runs were 10, if you remember. And um, from those 10 genetic algorithm runs, uh, uh, we see that one, two, three, four, five, six. There were a uh, program identified six binding sites, the binding sites. But uh, this site of binding was the best because four times the ligand binds over here. Even though the, this was the best in terms of energy because it was lowest in energy, this, uh, this binding site, but because there were four times the ligand bind here, so there must be something which is making the system more stable here. So four times it binds. So this is the best uh, um, site of binding and that, that's what we, we can just uh, confirm. And now what we can, so this is, this is the, the best uh, binding site. And if you want to read into more uh, into it, and that's what we want to, Click so this and sign you have to click and then you have to click on show info so you get more information about it. So it says um, in this cluster, in uh, so and then you also click on build hydrogen bond. So two more information here and um, so a lot of information is there. So inhibition, it also gives you inhibition constant in, in micromolar it is giving you 198.16. So what you like, it's kind of from the energy, from the banding energy, it already estimates uh, inhibition constant, which, which, which experimental people look into and laugh sometimes because yeah, it's something like you find there in your experiments. So, Using this uh, arrow, you can change the docking poses. You see what there is uh, changing. There is change there. You, you look into there and you see different, different options. And you see it is interacting with the glycine 20, glycine 20, glycine 20, glycine 20. So there were four, four uh, docking confirmation. And uh, this was one way to identify identi identify kind of uh, the best docking location. 
but there are other ways also or like which people like to do is like go to confirmation and play rank by energy okay and then the whole whole thing is ranked by energy and uh, so you will see that uh, interaction is made so in this window you will see glycine 69 glycine 69 we did not specify it but i know by my knowledge that glycine 69 is important because it's a po s2 pocket residue 69 it, you you may not know but i know so glycine 69 is important residue as asn 163 is also important residue for for the binding of ligands so this is like the kind of best position so and, and second also you can have a look it is okay and then again so you see this was uh, some other site which uh, does not make sense it was binding somewhere else right so you can just uh, uh, think about like uh, talking can bind things anywhere where it finds okay but you have to decide on what molecular interactions it is making so let's say uh, the first one with the lowest energy and uh, lowest energy and, um, and good interactions so uh, what was it um, show the cluster so actually this is this cluster not the, this cluster in this cluster this was the best cluster but uh, that was not good this was a better place of binding this in this cluster so you have to like make a decision based on the literatures so even though so this 10 number of ga runs 10 is not enough this is very less so um, that's why i was telling you but if you have like 100 uh, ga runs then you have to decide upon which cluster is biggest but because we did just 10 runs and that's why i identified this cluster biggest but it was my mistake that i didn't look into the residues first but if i look into this cluster uh, it is more more making more sense that it will bind here for inhibition so now we know which pose is better based on the molecular interactions based on the energy based on the cluster size at least we see from the clusters that it is better than these four binding sites this is better but not better than this so it's but also not more different from four two is just close to four but it is we can just uh, ignore this and then look into these two and then we see that this cluster uh, of residues are making proper interactions and next step is what we want to save the complex so i will do write complex and then write complex complex and then write pdbqt and that's done and then we write close and then close this and then again we can just uh, clean everything and then open because that is written in the pdbqt format and pymol does not know what is pdbqt format only mgl tool knows autodoc knows what is pdbqt file so because i want to later open in the pymol so i will open the complex here and then i will save as pdb right pdb and then i will just say okay and then the structure is saved oh there's a lot of things open here anyway let's go to okay no yeah, yeah. so where is the complex yeah here is the complex and the complex is saved here and we can have go to preset and look into the ligands and you see there we have a molecular interaction here and here and we can label the residues of course the glycine 69 and this one which we told that it which we uh, which we know from literature that these are quite important residues for inhibitor binding the ligand binds here so I so now I, I think we are done for today. And um, if you have 
further questions i will be happy to take uh, those questions uh, for sidra uh, because you talked about um, you talked about um, the supercomputers like uh, or, or virtual screening so if you have like further questions you can also write to me email later and we can discuss uh, together about your project and how you can do i will be happy I to help you yeah. yes we can separately discuss it uh, sure. yes and um, for others like if you have a question or you have any thought about the, uh, the the workshop if you have any comments please please let me know or let us know yes please do share the slides for further reference <laughs> that's like golden thing right please share the slides yeah yeah so so like yesterday please write uh, yes in the chat so i know who were uh, in today's session so oh, i will send you directly the, the slides so everyone please uh, who are present please write uh, yes and uh, we, will, we will i will i will send you recordings i will upload on the youtube when i will find some time uh, on the channel of ssgsa uh, so you can access it, but I will not take much time. Just give me one week time. Maybe I can do overnight, but I don't know if I am alive over the night, then I will do it. So, hmm, yes, uh, you have some things to say. Otherwise, uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Safdari to uh, say some words to you and then we can close the session. No, thank you everyone for attending the session. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, Sabha Bhai for sparing so much time and you must have realized that it was such a uh, informative session for everyone. And uh, inshallah, uh, we hope that we will continue to hold such sessions in the future also for biology. And also you are free to uh, suggest us some topics as uh, yesterday also we discussed some topics that this can be in the future also, right? So we all have different skill sets uh, in our uh, PhDs and postdocs and uh, we are willing to share it with you guys also. So if you have any uh, suggestions for the future topic also, you may write to the SSGSA chair or to Sababhai or to us, you know, inshallah. We will try to uh, hold such meetings also in future, inshallah, right? And suggestions in this regards are very welcome. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Aris Bhai. It, uh, it, you know, it was quite a pleasure to work with you on this thing. So I see Bint Zehra has something to say. She has raised hand. No, it was my hand. Sorry. <laughs> it was my hand. So no, so I don't think so. we have something more to discuss today. So uh, please feel free to write to us about anything uh, you would like to discuss. And if you have something, if you are trapped in some PyMol thing or uh, auto talk thing, you, you please feel free to write to me. If I can help you, I will help you. Or if I cannot, I will tell you where is the best place to add, find the help. So thank you very much. Uh, it's almost half an hour more than what we were planning to. And yes, I'm looking forward to see you all in next possible workshop. So thank you very much. Have a nice rest of the evening and good night. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you.